The Hunt Savvy Test was the judge's choice in the first of three series. Each handler and dog team would watch as their teammates would walk to the line and take on the challenge, hoping that each would accrue enough points and maintain a position at the top of the point standings. Get ready as we complete series one and see which team makes their debut as the top team in the very first Drake Waterfowl's 4x4 team medley. Uh, welcome, we are back again in Huntsville, Alabama. Thrilled, in fact, to be here in Huntsville. I'm Tommy Sanders, and of course, who best to provide the analysis in this great, great competition than one of the competitors themselves. And this week, it's Rody Best from Page, Texas, captain of Team Yukonuba's Best. Rody, thank you for being here today. We're into our third week of the Hunt Savvy Series competition. Get ready to catch our viewers up, finish this Series 1. What do you think about it so far? Well, the judges did a very good job of setting this test up. They knew very well how to place the birds in positions that the dogs would not want to find them. Not only that, but you've got a couple other factors that, that make this test even more challenging. The visibility conditions. As you can see here from the map, these birds are varied from 144 yards out there to right in your face at 10 yards. It's a very difficult test to, uh, to do all around well. Briefly showed you the rules there, but the essence of it is this. Four handlers, four dogs on each team, and no more than two of those team members can be pros. So that's the way it's worked so far. We take a look at our scoreboard, our leaderboard so far. Team Tritronics is on top with a score of 28, but this is still uh, we've got plenty more teams that have not run yet, so that's just a snapshot of where we are at, at this point in time. And at this point in time, we are going to continue with the action. This is Team Loyal, Wes Wilkes, and his dog Ranger. Rody, walk us through the marks coming out. Well, Ranger is, is seeing all these marks, which is a good thing. A lot of the dogs missed one of the marks or maybe two of them. It's obvious that, that Ranger is getting a good look at all these marks, and that sure helps. He's very steady on this, this breaking bird as well, too, since they're nice and calm and controlled. Well, so far so good, but it's very early on in this competition. The team makeup of Team Loyal, well, we had team captain Joel Porter talk about that a little bit earlier. When we put our team together, we, we put a lot of uh, emphasis on seeing all three sides of it. We wanted to see dogs that had done all three. We wanted to see handlers that had done all three. And that's another thing that comes into play is the handlers. You know, you, you have to be a handler at this Ranger. game. You have to know when you, to blow the whistles, when not to blow the whistles, when to handle, when not to handle what side to work the dog from. And there's so much that goes into it. You know, split second decisions are made on the line that that handler has to do. So we really looked at our handlers as well and put together some handlers that, that we felt real confident in. We felt like they knew their dog um, were a great teammate. So, you know, I'd take the three I got with me um, and I'd go to war again with them. Well, while we heard from Joel there, of course, we saw Ranger pick up the wipeout bird, also that left hand bird. Everything successful so far, everything looking really good, and Ranger now, uh, Rody, on his way to that middle bird. Wes is very calm and controlled himself. I think the two of these are working very well together. And Ranger's on a very good line. Wes seems pretty confident that he knows where this bird is. We saw many dogs go out to this area, put on a big hunt, uh, but Ranger seems to know exactly where this bird is at. Well done. Success on the middle bird. Uh, next up, it's going to be uh, Mark 1, right? This is the right-hand bird. Again, he seems to know exactly where he's going. It's like he put these birds out there himself, and he's just going back out to pick them up. Good success for Wes Wilkes and Rangers so far. They are definitely on track. We're going to take you back to some earlier teams here, Joel Porter and Jack and the rest of this team loyal. Now, Jack starts out sitting here real calm and collective. Seems to be under control. And then we see a slight misstep here where he almost comes off the platform. I think he actually did fall off. And that puts him in a dangerous situation for this wipeout bird because here it comes and it's extremely tempting for the dog to want to go get it. Uh-oh. Nope. Mm, the damage is done at that point right there. That is, a, that is a loss of control most definitely. The score of zero for this team. Now over to Brad Arrington and Chloe. Now Chloe starts off on a good line for this bird, but she gets off to the right and Brad has a hard time getting her back over. Again, a score of four for this team, so not good at all. Nathan Smith and Brody, the third team we're going to take a look at here. 
Now Brody's dog starts off with some trouble right in the beginning and he has a handle all the way out there to that right bird. That was a pretty difficult blow. Yeah, tough going for Nathan Smith and Brody as well. So a team score of six. Back to Wes Wilkes and Ranger. Perfect so far, and we are getting going on the blind. Well, Wes definitely carried the team through this series. He did an outstanding job on an extremely difficult blind. It's a very narrow and tight blind, very difficult to finish. And I don't think Wes blew a whistle till the very end of the blind. Wes looks extremely calm up there. Minimum of handling so far, and that is the ideal situation. Very well done. Ranger definitely on track. His concentration was fantastic all through this. Uh, ditto for Wes Wilkes. So this team, the bright spot for Team Loyal. 20, of course, a perfect score, and that certainly helps the team in the overall standings. Team Loyal up on top. Coming up next, Team Yukonuba Sandhill and Captain Al Arthur already. Drake Waterfowl's 4x4 Team Medley is powered by Yukonuba. Huntsville Sports Commission, showcasing one of the South's greatest cities. Waterdog E-Clinics, the world's first 24-7, 365 dog training experience. And by Thunder Equipment. Uh, this is new and different. You have three teammates that are depending on you. Hopefully my three teammates will pick me up, but you know, human nature says you feel bad when you don't help your team out. When you get a zero, that means they have to carry you and everyone likes to carry their fair share. Well, Mark and girl, they did not do well. Girl, unsure of the direction. She struggled on the marks, leaving Mark frustrated and with a score of zero. With the sun peeking through the clouds and adding a glare directly into the eyes of retired history teacher Clint Joyner and his dog sister, Mark's teammates had an additional element to deal with, and marking became more difficult as each of the birds came out. Captain Al Arthur paced as if he was on the sidelines at a Georgia Bulldog game, unsure of his next play. Again, judges are looking for marking and memory. The faults added up on the left-hand bird, where Clint had to battle the sun to see Sister in the direction she decided to take. Eventually, Clint would have to handle Sister to the area of the fall. Mark II, the middle bird, would also be a challenge, but a good pickup on the right-hand mark. The blind would be only fair. This Super Retriever Series style of competition is quite different for the field trial moguls of Team Yukonuba Sandhill. Clint and Sister bring in a score of eight, giving Yukonuba Sandhill a team score of 24. Captain, or should we say coach, Al Arthur and Dozer are still left to run for this team. Team Bayer came to the line with the last of their flights, Chris Inman and Apache. With a team score of 16, they would have high hopes for a perfect score on this flight. Chris and Apache have been untouchable in the regular season of Super Retriever Series and already qualified for the crown championship. If the streak continues, their team should do well. Apache had wonderful memory on the marks until it came to the middle bird, where Chris had to handle to the area, therefore deducting from his team's high hopes of perfection. The blind was also a challenge. Chris and Apache end up with a score of 10. After the excitement from the run of Mark Land and Rose of Team Gaston Custom Calls, next up would bring to the line Sam and handler Alan Dillard. The right-hand bird and the blind would be trouble for them, and only a score of four. The same trouble would also be there for Team Captain Thad Simmons and his dog Reggie, having to handle to the area where two birds fell. Thad and Reggie would barely make the cut with a score of two. But last teammate, Kevin Phillips and Levi, would pull this team back up with a score of 16, giving Gaston custom calls a total team score of 36. Next team to the line would be the last flight of Team Country Vet, Lyle Steinman and his dog Chief. Team Country Vet not faring so well with a score of 12 up to this point. 
The confident Lyle Steinman, unsure of his canine teammate until the very end, would show that the dog he picked in chief would be nothing but great. Chief was great and picked up each bird with style and grace, only having one handle to the area of the middle bird and nothing other than perfection on the run to the blind. Lyle was pleased with Chief's performance and very pleased with a score of 18. Team Country Vet come away with a total score of 30. And as you look at the leaderboard, this puts Team Country Vet tied with Team Loyal, currently in second place. Team Gaston Custom Calls on top. We have three more teams to finish their flights, but first, let's jump on over to the dock for some Yukonuba super fly action. Come on, fly, buddy! Oh! That was huge! We're back in the city of Huntsville, Alabama, a dog-friendly town. Just listen to Ralph Stone of the Huntsville Sports Commission. This is a very dog-friendly area. And that's what makes the Super Retriever Series so popular here. Uh, you've got, of course, these are the working dogs and a lot of the outdoor people that like to hunt and work their dogs enjoy this type of uh, atmosphere. But we have three dog parks right now in the city limits of Huntsville and they're just wildly popular. It's a place where people can take their dogs and interact socially uh, with each other and the dogs can interact at the time and it's, it's been very popular. We just have a great community that uh, is very in tune with the, with the dog world. From the look of it, a fun place to be. You gotta love a dog loving town in Huntsville, Alabama. Certainly fits that description. In tune with the dogs and certainly in tune with our Super Retriever series. Huntsville, the new home of the SRS Crown Championship, in fact, that is coming up in November. We got some great competition going on right now in Huntsville at the Valley Bend Shopping Center. Uh, you put up a tank like this and folks show up. They show up for all sorts of reasons, mainly to watch these great dogs in action. Some of them actually to bring their dogs and try out for the first time this competition. Many have done that. And actually, some of them have found they did quite, quite well, put up a good jump and eventually end up in the pro divisions, just like Lil Tex is owned by Sandy Goodson. Sandy in the top 12, but didn't quite make it to the finals with Lil Texas. But man, that pup put on a show, a fun rodeo for this crowd. Not so much fun for Sandy, though. Some great competition, though. We have seen some fantastic performances. So let's take a minute and look at our top six here at the Valley Bend Shopping Center in Huntsville, Alabama. Nina Helfer, her dog Blazer. A lot of experience with these. She's been to a lot of Super Retriever Series events. They're from Westerville, Ohio. Blazer at his best jump, 20 feet, 8 inches. That is really strong. Next up, Ray Smitherman, his dog Gator, this pair from Calhoun, Georgia. Nice jump there, 18 feet, eight inches. And Sam Gench, here's Rhapsody from Carterville, Georgia, 20 feet, two inches. Good, strong performances by dogs fitting all sorts of descriptions. That's one of the attractions of this sort of competition. But the best of the weekend, here they are right here, Natasha Amari and her dog Brushy. Boy, Georgia representing quite well here in northern Alabama. Brushy and Natasha reside on a small farm in Calhoun, Georgia. Natasha is an equine veterinarian, full time. Loves to spend time with the horses when not uh, working with the horses. And Brushy, uh, actually short for brushed with bourbon. You can draw your own conclusions there. Two-year-old black lab, very good looking dog, very, very strong. First lab that Natasha has ever had and certainly the first dock diving dog. Brushy in action here, loves the life on the farm, makes him strong, obviously. It's his favorite thing to do, the dock diving here. Loves to go pheasant hunting in the off season and look at this tremendous form. A lot of speed and a great result. Best jump, 23 feet and four inches for Brushy. Now here's no stranger to the Super Retriever Series Dock Dog Competition. This is Randy Murphy and his dog Quasi. You'll recognize uh, who his grandfather was, Little Morgan. Certainly uh, one of the godfathers, if you will, of this sport right here. 
This dog broke the record, the world record 2811 back in 2010. It's been surpassed since then, but Quasi still loves this. Took second place here with a jump of 25 feet even. And last up, Bill Helfer and Jaeger. Look at the size of this dog, but you will be impressed with the way he's able to convert speed into elevation, into lift right there. Bill was just watching Jaeger while his mom and dad were on vacation. They came out for this and Jaeger had a big time. Took first place with that jump, 25 feet, five inches. Wow is all you can say. Big time for all at the Yukonuba Super Doc Competition. There's the final tally as we make it all official right here. And congratulations to all these teams who performed so well and all the teams that were introduced to the sport on this great, great weekend in Huntsville. Plenty more coming up. Series 1 Hunt Savvy continues. Drake Waterfowl's 4x4 Team Medley has been brought to you by Drake Waterfowl, innovators in waterfowl hunting. DNT Media, we make market leaders. And powered by Yukonuba. Last year I was fortunate enough to judge in um, Arkansas for the Crown Retriever Championships. And I had a great time and it was fun and it was competitive. So the next time it rolled around, instead of judging, I wanted to, you know, attempt to run it. Well, Al Arthur was asked to be a judge, but instead he's hoping that the judges look kindly upon him and his teammates here at the events in Huntsville. Guys, back to you. Al Arthur, team captain of uh, Team Yukonuba Sandhill here, looking for a good result. And we should point out, uh, Rody, that this team, as far as field trial, strictly speaking, goes, this is top shelf all the way. But this 4x4 competition is to judge adaptability to other formats, so they've got to do well in this format. Well, as far as field trial trainers go, you won't find many better than Al Arthur. He's one of the best out there, and he specializes in this game. But unfortunately, the SRS is not about just one game, but several different games. And you have to be an athlete, like an Ironman almost, to be able to do all the different things that are required to completely and be successful in this event. And we see Al here picking up the blind. he got a score of 10 out of a possible 20. I'm sure Al's disappointed. He's used to, to winning you know, he's used to being the best. Team Yukonuba Sandhills, the team in action right now. We'll go over to uh, Dorothy, Dorothy Ruman, and her dog, Cole. And Dorothy was one of my teammates, and she struggled on one bird. And that was the only difference between a perfect score and what she ended up with. Dorothy is one of the most analytical trainers I've ever seen. And if you listen here, Dorothy gives us a tip on where to properly place our dogs in order to be successful. Communication amongst the teammates. That is a new dimension for us here on the Super Retriever Series. Very interesting. And out of the line, Colby Williams, same team, and his dog, Bobo. And I'd only met Colby a couple of days prior to this event. Unfortunately, we had a teammate that had to drop out, and we had to find a sudden replacement. And uh, I didn't know anything about Colby. I knew he was 21 years old and had a little experience handling some dogs. I was really impressed with his ability to, to be up there and be calm and controlled under a very tense situation. A lot was riding on this. He's having a little bit of trouble on this middle bird, having a handle to the area. And a score of 12 for Colby Williams and Bobo as we watch this next team into action here. Well, this is our man, Rody Best and Reed. Well, Reed struggled a little bit on this bird, made me nervous and then worked it out. I don't think we got any point deductions on that bird. The key bird was the right bird, which you see here. And um, he was just a little left of the bird when he came out. Missed it by a few feet, and I ended up having to handle him over to it. It was very close, almost had it, almost had the perfect score, but just barely missed it. Well, what a great team effort overall by this uh, fantastic team, Yukonuba's best. Congratulations to you guys, Rody, because you had a tremendous score, taking the lead with a 52. Score for Rody and Reed was 14 in that effort right there, so some good work by Yukonuba's best. best. Team Tritronics, Mike Gibson and Shea D coming to the line. Having to score high, the pressure is on this team. I've known Mike for a while, and him and Shady are a very, very good team. Very consistent. You can rely on both Mike to make good decisions and Shady to do her part as well. These are two very good teammates that work very well together. She looks like she, from here she gets a good look at all the birds. You can see how controlled he is. I mean, Mike doesn't look nervous at all. He's like it's... Monday through Friday, being at work kind of day. And for an amateur, that's extremely impressive. 
The thing to remember about this is how long it takes for the dogs to get out there and pick up these marks. This series here took about 15 to 20 minutes per dog. And when you have that much swimming involved, the memory really becomes a factor. Does that dog remember after being tired and swimming that far? Does it really remember where that bird is? And we talked about not just the swimming, Rody. We talked about all that vegetation in there. A dog has to expend a tremendous amount of strength just to make it. It's not pure swimming. It's, it's even more than that, isn't it? It is. And it looks like Shady was a little left on this bird. Mike had to put her back over. That's a handle to the area. Yeah, and you're right, Tommy. This is very difficult with that vegetation in there. The older dogs without with less endurance. Um, we've had several dogs with torn ACLs and knee repairs that are not quite up to 100%. This is tough swimming for them, and it puts a strain on their memory, uh, their, their endurance. Everything is difficult to finish this thing. Totally stressful situation here. Mike Gibson, a lot of composure, though, especially for one of these amateurs. This guy has been there before. Yeah, and he's having a handle on another bird here. Um, Shady was a little left again. I think she was trying to stay in the water, trying to be a good dog. She stayed in the water a little too long, and Mike made the decision early, which I think was the right decision to go ahead and get her up on land and get her over there to that bird before it gets too far gone. So she's got that bird, and she's coming back. Mike Gibson and Shady for Team Tritronics, and so a final total score of 16 for Mike Gibson and Shady. Cade Gentry and Bonnie's earlier effort, though, was absolutely stellar. A perfect score of 20 points. That really helped. Team Tritronics is also composed of J. Paul Jackson and Red, Bobby Wills, and Rip. The total team, 44 points for Team Tritronics. Our Drake's 4x4 team medley competition pushes on, and we are done with this part of the competition, and there's the final tally. Team Yukonuba's best. Congratulations, Rody. Good job there. On top. As we move into the second phase of competition, Tritronics, Gaston Calls, Yukonuba, Sand Hill, Team Loyal, Country Vet, Team Bayer, Animal Health, all looking for a better result next time around. And the second part of this competition, Series 2, will be all about field trials. Should be some very, very interesting outcomes in that one. See you next time.